Mm, people politics, very interesting. You know, the Borgias and all that. Well, it's not quite that, but uh, Cardinal Burke, Cardinal Burke, an American, is a hero of the Catholic right. I mean, very much almost their pope, really. Conservative stalwart. Um, he was the leader of the conservatives. Well, in a long assumed move, we knew it was going to happen. Over the weekend, he, he was relegated from a central position within the Vatican to a purely ceremonial role. It's part of an emerging division within the Catholic Church and what is seen by many as an attempt by Pope Francis to strengthen the progressives and, and the liberals and weaken the traditionalists and the conservatives. Kristen Elia is a Catholic ag academic, president of the Catholic Civil Rights League, and he's also in the Knights of Malta, and that's a position chaplain to the Knights of Malta that's been given to, because you've got a Knights of Malta tie and the pelpin and cufflinks. Cuff you are a Knight of Malta. Um, it, it's a grand organization, but it, the, the position he has is purely ceremonial, where he was a senior person within the Vatican. It has been ceremonial in recent years, but I'd like to look at the opportunity now for the order. We're very excited by it. I know what you're going to say. Christian, we're very excited about it. I know, but this, this is a very public, very profound relegation. It would appear to be that way by convention, conventional uh, wisdom. Or any wisdom, really. <laughs> well, I, I, I will point a few things out, though. He uh, had that post for six years, and no one has held it longer than six years except for one who held it for ten years. Let me interrupt you there. That is true, but usually a man of his age, he's got many years to go in a high position, they're moved to another position of similar significance. They're not relegated in such a way. That has been the regular trend. I do agree with you there. I do want to bring out some points, though. Um, if the attempt was to muzzle him, in a way, or, or to just have him not speak out in the media, then this would not have been the best of strategies. Because now, in a sense, he's free. Mm -hmm. Be before, in his role, he was very busy. A lot of paperwork. Let's face it, before the last few months, who knew who he was? Traditional Latin mass enthusiasts, Americans, and uh, people in the pro-life world who devote a lot of time. Yeah. Because he's been very outspoken on life issues. Other than that, no one really knew who he was. It's, it's not a very glamorous role being head of the, the Supreme but, Court. But, but he wasn't Vatican. moved to this other position to liberate him. He was moved to that position, surely you would agree, as, as a public gesture of we are not happy with what you've been saying. I won't go that far. I think that it's an acknowledgement that um, they agree to disagree, the Holy Father and Cardinal Burke. It is true, if you analyze everything that Cardinal Burke has said, he's never directly attacked the Pope. And, instead, he's, he's commented several times that he would never put himself in a position contrary to that of the Holy Father. Certainly, the Holy Father hasn't made reference to him directly. Yes, I do understand that apparently within the, uh, no, most evidently rather, in the last synod, they came across on opposite sides. Well, let, let, that could continue. Yeah, but we, look, let's be candid here, be, because this is a, it's a Christian context, I would hope. You have a pope who is quite progressive on many issues. He's, he's Catholic, he's the Pope, he's orthodox, but he's progressive on certain issues. He wants to change the conversation, he wants to alter the narrative, bring it forward. And people who are more conservative-minded are being moved to the, more to the fringes. Many more conservative, particularly the more historically conservative people in the Catholic Church, are incredibly angry at this. They, 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 they don't know what to do. They, they think there's disaster. You know that. I know that, and I acknowledge that. However, there are also other examples, things that I can point out. A lot of people are saying, well, who's going to be next? Is it going to be Cardinal Mueller? Cardinal Mueller is pretty much the head of the CDF, the, which is directly uh, the Congregation Doctrine of Faith. Yeah. It's the role, of course, that yeah, Cardinal Ratzinger, who became Pope Benedict, had before. Inquisition. It's the most, yes, it, yes, historically. Yeah. That's a very important role. And um, there's been no uh, talk about removing Mueller. In fact, I do recall about six years ago when Mueller was given that job by Pope Benedict, mm. the same people were questioning, what's wrong with Pope Benedict? How come he appointed a theologian who had liberal views 30 years ago into that most important position, mm. uh, the position that he I would held. say that Pope Benedict was more willing to appoint positions of authority, those with whom he disagreed, it seems, than the current pope. But I do believe there is a division now. I do think the Pope is looking to a, a future and the, and the Synod of next year where more progressive ideas are introduced. And um, I know, because I, I, I do read some of the blogs and so on, that there is, I think for the vast majority of Catholics, they don't know and they don't care. They just do what they do. They try to live the best life they can. But for those who are involved, more liberal-minded people think everything's in their favor and more conservative-minded people are in despair. Not a bad assessment, Michael. I, 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 will, I will say this, though. It, it does make sense. If we're going to have, well, we are going to have a larger synod next year. Yeah. And I've gone on record saying that 
in the year after or in the years after, we might have a third Vatican Council where issues that, yeah. of faith and morals might be brought up. So therefore, it would make sense to eventually it's going to come across his mm -hmm. desk. It's going to go through canon law. And if he's already shown that he, you know, he's uh, a certain way on certain issues, and let's just say less open to dialogue, uh, justifiably, many people would say, then obviously one would have to clear the path. If, if Pope Francis mm -hmm. is looking for success in a certain area, one has to, you know, uh, be preemptive and, and clear the way. So I will give you that. But also, we're talking about something that will happen over a long period of time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He might not survive. He is an elderly man, and he speaks openly about uh, the fact that he probably doesn't have too many more years to live. He has said that, and I, I'm sure uh, appointments to people who will be able to vote for the next pope will, will not uh, be glaringly conservative in the next couple of years. Well, Cardinal Burke is a young man at 66. Yeah. Uh, we, we'll have a similar conversation years from now, and uh, mm. I, I don't think that this, this move as our prefect, uh, the Order of Malta, will, will be his final post. Let's mm. put it that way. Think he'll be pope? Well, when I came on, my first ever appearance was Sun News Network, and people were talking about Cardinal Dolan as being papabile, uh, yeah. a chance. I said, no, if there's any American who had that chance at the time, I was thinking it was actually Cardinal uh, Burke, well, because yeah. the fact that he is, okay. uh, he's American, but he's also Roman. He's been there Well, the result was very, very, very different. Thank you very much indeed. All the best.